So I guess you're expecting some words, eh? <laughs> well, I loved Chip's talk. I thought he just did such a beautiful job of bringing us all together and connecting us all and connecting Sid's enlightenment experience with all of us being here together. And I, too, I feel so honored to have the opportunity to talk with you all and to share with you all. I, I learned many, 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 many years ago that when you share, it's a gift. I think first and foremost for the person who's sharing because it's, it's the awakening of your own soul that um, starts that process of sharing. And I know that sometimes people think, um, I don't know if I've got enough training or if I can articulate the principles or if I can do this or that. And what I'm seeing more and more that it's not about that at all. It's so about our living. You know, our, our very being at home, knowing that we're home. There's something so reassuring about knowing we're home, that we don't have to go home, we don't have to reconnect, we're home. I know for me, when I started to get that realization deeper and deeper, it, it really lifted a lot of, of weight off my shoulders. Because instead of feeling that wisdom or mind had my back or was shoulder to shoulder with me, it was like me, us. And, and I love that as we come to, to know that we are the principles in action. That's what home is. Home is knowing we're the principles in action. That the principles are living truth within us. And there, there was a point, I don't know, maybe two, three months ago where, again, I realized a little more fully that I am mind. You are mind. Everybody on this planet is mind. Divine mind. I am consciousness. You are consciousness divine consciousness. I am thought. You are thought. Divine thought. And, and in the past, I, I found that like, oh, that's too big for me. You know, this feeling of kind of owning who we are, acknowledging who we are. And then a new word came to mind for me about honorship. You know, honor that we honor who we are. We honor the principles that we are. And so there was this thing about honorship. You know, like this tender holding of who we are. And, and how that helps us live there more and more of the time. And it's the living that brings out more power to touch whoever you come in contact with so that they are awakened and they start to learn from themselves. They start to gain independence from their thinking. Because that's something else that I found, that as I, 
felt myself sinking more deeply into who I am, that I was less conscious of my thinking. I was more deeply conscious of the principle of thought as the ability to create and to live in the moment of creation. But I was not enamored with my thinking. Like, thinking was so secondary. You know, it didn't have the same contagiousness that it had before for me. It, it was becoming and is becoming more and more irrelevant. That independence from thinking. Because you're living more fully in thought. You're living more fully in the moment of creation. And it's not that when I'm feeling feeling that, you know, that I'm that I'm thinking that, you know what I mean? Like I don't know how to describe it. I'm trying to describe the indescribable. But it's just the simplicity of living with more tranquility. And then when it comes time where I'm given the privilege of sharing with people or you know, doing mentoring, something like that, it's then when this information, this true wisdom, this true knowledge comes out and tells me what's been happening in my life. It's after the fact, kind of, because in the moment, you're just in the moment, living, and enjoying whatever it is you're doing. And so this thing again about realizing more independence from our thinking is really, really valuable if you get a little glimmer. And I wouldn't be surprised if you already haven't been getting quite a glimmer about that because of the oneness of humanity. Someone I was just speaking with for two minutes during the talk when I asked her, you know, what drew you here? What came out of her was something about, similar to, you know, wanting to be more free of her thinking. And I thought, wow, you know, that's what's been coming to me this last little while. And when Chip was talking this morning, there were several phrases he used about us being like a change agent. And I thought, wow, you know, I just, I woke up this morning and that original thought for me crossed my mind. And it showed again kind of the oneness of humanity, that we're all one in these principles, in this consciousness. Creative spiritual intelligence, mind. That's who we are. And I find that so fascinating because we're our best educator, bar none. Bar none. I know it's wonderful and I appreciate so much that you've come here to the school, but you're still the educator. You still have a choice whether or not you hear anything from us or from each other. It's still your choice. And bottom line, when you do hear something, it's your own hearing. You're hearing yourself. And that also is so important because oftentimes people will leave here or the conference we were just at in Los Angeles, and they'll think, oh, it was this group dynamics, and, and all the speakers were so charismatic and, you know, had such deep feelings. And then they think it may not be the same when they go home. But it, it will. It can. And it is. And again, that's the best. That's the best of both worlds, that you can come to something like this, you can, you can hear something that you may think comes from us or each other, and in reality, 
it's coming from you. You may pick up this deep, beautiful feeling. And when you go home, you'll be elevated in your consciousness and more apt to tune in to yourself more and more of the time so that you really do become your, your own teacher, your own coach, your own best friend, where you're never lonely even when you're alone, where you live in communion with true self. And it's that feeling of living in communion with true self that is the message.